Hey, what's up, y'all? It's your girl, Jamika. Please go ahead and subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell button down below, as well as share these videos across your social media websites and give this video a big thumbs up if you like the content. And please support the channel by donating to my Patreon website link down below. Okay, y'all, so by now, just like most of you out there in the world, I'm sure we've all seen the Surviving R. Kelly document series on Lifetime from two weeks ago, okay? And quite frankly, honestly, I'm I'm all R. Kelly'd out, okay? I'm all R. Kelly'd out. I don't want to hear another interview about this man and the ordeals that happened back then. I just don't. Um, I feel like at this point, is he going to jail or not? Is he getting some mental and emotional um, psychiatric help or not? If y'all can't give me that answer, I don't want to hear another interview about it, period. But I did stumble across this video, y'all, this interview, and I was cracking up, screaming, just laughing so hard because this man here by the name of Demetrius, he's R. Kelly's um, former and old um, tour manager and former and old personal assistant and he gave the most confusing dumbest stupidest accidental self-incriminating um interview if i've ever seen one in my life he tried to tiptoe and dance around the facts when he was answering the young lady and oh my god stevie wonder could see through the bull crap y'all let me know down below in the comments down below what y'all think about it once y'all watch the full video um anyways also check out the young lady who is hosting the interview her name is neek check out her youtube channel called neek at night she posts a lot of consistent good content on um, when it comes to celebrity gossip and make sure that y'all subscribe to my channel as well hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell button down below and um thank you so much for supporting me in my video my videos and my channels and uh help me get to uh you know 400 subscribers okay y'all thank you for the love peace enjoy what i want to know is what your association with r kelly is i was his role manager the first five years of his career that was with him when he signed his deal with jr records born into the 90s that was the first album and i worked with him through up until the Leah situation since you mentioned the Leah situation there was um mention in the docuseries that you helped forge the marriage certificate in that so can you elaborate on what happened with that i drove and they followed me to a place where she got an id to get a marriage license okay and okay wait wait wait, wait. okay so you're saying that they drove Following behind you. They're following behind me. To yes. a place. So what you're saying is you guys got or she got a fake ID. Is that what you're saying? She got a. It was a real ID, but it was from you know it was from um, um, downtown. It was it was a legitimate ID from a, a a county building or something. She got legitimate IDs to um, go get a marriage license. And you're saying that it wasn't. I mean, if it if it had her name with a different age, that would make it a fake ID, right? It's a fake ID, but it was a real ID. It was a government. It was, you know, it's now you. I'm not gonna. Uh, uh, it was years ago. Uh, no, so I understand. There's I'm just no trying excuse to... for it, but it, I, I took them down to a, a government official place, and somebody there took some money, and they took an ID for her. Okay, so the only thing that that you're saying that your role was just you were just there when she got the fake ID. Yeah. Or the real ID, but the fake, whatever. However, are we going to yeah. describe the ID? Um, yeah, I took them to a place where she got an ID to got her a marriage license. Okay. I mean, when I first met Robert, we used to walk right around. I come get this kid because he man. Let me put him in the car. I'm, I'm pulling up on these two ladies, young teenage girls. Uh, and it, girl, I was wondering if you would like to come with me to a place where our love would flow. That boy would flow right there. Okay. And the girls was, ooh, hey, let's go get a McDonald's. Let's go in here and sit down in Burger King. And that's, from there we going on a date. Mm -hmm. So, and, and, and that built his confidence. And there was mentions in my interview that I did with Public Announcement that money was taken from him? Nah. From you? Nah, or, nah. or that you took money well, from him? Well, Robert that them gave me a, they it? gave me a, no, I didn't steal, I didn't take no money. I took Robert, I took money from Robert in the beginning. Um, when we were down in New York, that's the only time I took any money. It was just 200 bucks. And I took that because my family was hungry 
And I was in New York with him, and he had a whole pocket full of money and everything. He didn't give me nothing. And uh, that's when we first started getting, in, you know, getting into it. I'm like, I was the kind of person, man. And my my girl tell me she hungry, my baby hungry. Then I got to get some money, and I'm in New York, man. You can't get to me. Somebody's finna get a headache because I was ready to go outside and take some money from somebody. But instead, I took it out of his wallet because he had a whole bunch anyway. And I didn't steal nothing from nobody. I'm not a thief. I'll take some shit from you, but I ain't a thief. You know, I'm a thief, but I ain't taking it from you. Robert, no, I ain't steal nothing from you. Okay, so you own, okay. So I'm going to just back up and reset. Okay. Because I'm like, okay, <laughs> trying to take it all in. Okay, so your um, statement to that is that it only happened one time, and that was way before your departure with him, and that had nothing to do with you leaving him. That was just Absolutely. a one time, Absolutely. a one time situation where you needed to feed your family and you let him know, I took the money, I had to feed my family. And no, now, I let him know later. I didn't let him know right that day. I let him know later. But, uh, you know, he told me, I mean, I don't even think it's you. you know, I ain't say nothing then, but it didn't come up in 95 to say that's why he fired me. No, way before that. Now, after I left him, you know, I had, uh, I still had the credit card, the American Express. Okay. And I, here it is. I'm, I'm, uh, I, after that, I left him. We're done. And Daryl, his accountant, knew I had this card. And he said, man, you just hold on to that. Shit, I used it. So mm. you, that you... wasn't, Daryl knew that, so that wasn't stealing either. He knew it. <laughs> so they didn't turn it off. I said, I got the card. He said, well, you just hold on to that, man. You might need a little something. Don't worry about it. Because I was. I was... Who, okay, so who's Daryl? Sorry, I don't Darryl, know. Daryl McDavid was his accountant. Okay, so his accountant knew that you had his credit card, and when you decided to depart from working with him, he gave you the green light to be able to continue to use yes, his credit card. He didn't card. say use it, he said hold on to it. He didn't say use it, he said hold on to it. But, you know, here I am broke. I went to the gas station one day. I'm, it's, it's winter time in Chicago, Christmas time, and I went to the gas station broke. I went to the gas station one day, and I tried the car, and it worked. Okay. It was Christmas then. <laughs> That's just the bottom line. I didn't think nothing about it. It worked. I used it. Fuck them. That was my thought. And I ain't steal shit. And, and that's just the bottom line to it. But know? if so, you didn't know about it, that's kind of, is kind of like stealing. Well, take it as stealing if you want to. I don't care. You know, if I'm a, so what? What are you, what, what? I ain't finna sit here and argue about if I still took something from that man. So I'm not going to sit here and be arguing about if it's a big deal to you. You see, because well, I tell well, you I didn't right. steal it. I well, took no, it. I, no, I understand what you're saying, but a lot of people want to know what what are the different motives. And that is when I, we were having the conversation about the different people who appeared in Surviving R. Kelly, a lot of it was they got motives because they have a vendetta against him. If there is bad blood, well, that makes a difference as to yes. the motive in speaking out about R. Kelly. So, I mean, it does make a difference if you took yes. from him and there's bad yeah. blood. To, uh, pretty much everybody that came into his life, he has done something. He, um, he went with my sister, <laughs> you know, his little head overruled his big head. But he was young for me to feel that, so I overlooked that. But oh, so he started dating your sister, or having so, a sexual relationship with her? Is that what you're saying? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yes, and I believe that when he got with you know my sister, or she was an older woman, and now wow. So she wasn't. A, so he wasn't totally into underage girls, because how old was your sister at the time? Twenty six, twenty seven. You know, and he was. <laughs> he was what? So. No, he was younger. He okay. was younger. So, um, when it comes to the docu series, because there was a lot of speculation on whether the people who participated in the docu series were paid or not paid. Did you guys receive compensation to be in the docu series? Well, they told me they couldn't pay you uh, just a straight out fee. They paid for pictures. You see, I got paid for pictures. I gave them three, four pictures. They gave me some money for the pictures. Um, um, I'm sure that everybody else got paid something if it wasn't for pictures or if it was for just pictures. It wasn't a lot of money involved when you're doing a documentary, documentary series, I don't think. I did it because they spoke of my book, and that's why I did it. Um, so now, you pretty um, much did it for I, uh, promo for your book. 
pretty much, you know, if it was about his beginning, I, I don't want to be forgotten. I was a part of that beginning. Well, hey, why not? Mm-hmm. You know, I helped develop him. He's, uh, I helped develop the monster. Right. I don't so know you don't Robert. think that he's holding any of the women hostage? Not a hostage, no. He can talk them out of things. It's just like if you got a man, you know, um, your level of respect for him is how you hold for him. His 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 display of love to you is what bonds you to. Mm-hmm. So, well, he's comforting to them, and I mean, they're comforting to him, and he's the provider for them. They mm-hmm. like the world they live in. But uh, those girls knew what they were doing, and as far as being, I don't think Robert is the hostage. He's he don't do that. He don't. So you don't that. think that he's okay. So you believe that they're able to leave on their own free will, and that you know it's a consensual relationship. Yeah, if they leave, they know that they walk what they're walking away from. They want that. We got a girl confused about some. If he mad, if he think he got to get to this girl. And, and she's giving him some stress, or he might be not having the grip he won't. She gonna, she gonna, he ain't gonna argue with you, Robert. Ain't like he gonna sit down on this piano, and he gonna, girl, I've been drowning myself in my own tears. That's her song. He got her again. So That's now she back hooked because he back her hooked. song. Her mama and them calling, and she, I'm okay, mom. I'm cool. And um, they living in a good life. But only my objection with Robert is that you should put them in school. You know, you should have them be. You mean, man, you should have your, your all your women. You should have them in, in college. They should be your lawyers, your doctors, and all that. You know, if you got them like that, and he can have it like that. But you don't know what to do with them. So now he's got a bunch of angry young girls. When a woman's fed up. <laughs> Ain't nothing you can do about it. I can't <laughs> you know take this Alberta song.